Here's the quick version. Electric motor, 300 watts, 12 volts. Main sprocket, 23 teeth. Chain, around the outside. Bolts to the spokes of the tire, 3D printed, 300 tooth sprocket. Theoretical top speed, 25 miles per hour. Actual top speed, 30 miles per hour. Lithium polymer battery. Motor controller. Arduino. Throttle. Circuit breaker. Testing. This is 75% throttle and 20 miles per hour. Voltage rating a bit over 15. I can keep going forever. Slightly longer version. The wheel is mechanically driven by a 300 tooth 3D printed rear sprocket and that's made in eight sections and then bolted to the spokes. It's driven by number 25 chain, comes out of the motor which is driven or which drives a 23 tooth sprocket. So that's a gear reduction of 23 to 300 and what that means is I can run this whole bike off of just one stage of gear reduction. The motor is familiar to high school robotics students. This is a sim motor. A uh, nominal 12 volts at about 330 watts. The motor is mounted to the bike through a combination of the black 3D printed motor mount and uh, bearing holders assembly. It's also partially supported by the fix to the motor mount that I had to make after a little bit of a failure here. Failure, you know, it's what we do. The motor mount is made into two sections which are joined in the middle here and uh, the bottom section bolts into some holes in the bike and the top section bolts into that. And it's not a solid piece for ease of 3D printing. This bottom section had this edge as its ground plane that was sitting on the glass. And then this rested on this and built up this way. And that's how I can make this huge overhang to kind of miss this rear brake. When I was initially laying out this design, I assumed that I would have to remove this rear brake in order to give me enough space to mount the motor. But to my chagrin, I actually was able to do this without removing that. And what that has resulted in is absolutely no tolerance, no clearance, and no way to easily work on this bike. But I didn't have to remove the rear brake, so I guess only I lose. Here's reason two why I thought... Oh, 3D print's done. Anyway, here's reason two why I thought that I would have to remove that rear brake. Do you see any clearance between those parts? Me neither. Let me turn it on so you can see the electronics. See, I have fully bedazzled this bike. There's two types of electronics on the bike. There's the dumb electronics, which are just sort of powered by the bike. And then there's the active electronics that control the actual speed and the control of the bike. The dumb electronics, we've got a rear tail light and also a headlight. And as well, there is actually a dash cam just on top of this headlight. Then in terms of active electronics, we have an Arduino, which controls the show takes an input from the throttle, which is just a potentiometer. I had used to have a dead man switch throttle, like a real throttle, one that I actually purchased from the internet, and it broke. And the Arduino was powered off of this, not this, but this five volt voltage regulator. This is a little uh, distribution board for all the fancy elements. I have a separate amperage meter that reads how, much, how many amps the motor is pulling. Up top, we display the mile per hour and the throttle percentage and a rough calculation of the voltage of the motor. Sorry, a rough calculation of the voltage of the battery. At the moment, the wiring is pretty much a mess. About a month ago, it was clean, but I've been adding new stuff and haven't really rewired it. Electrically, it's all powered by this four cell lithium polymer battery. It makes about 15 volts total. I have a little uh, readout for each of the cells to make sure it's balanced. That comes out into the breaker. I can turn on and off and into this small distribution board. Out the bottom comes power for the auxiliary elements and the computing stuff, and out the top comes power for the motor. The motor is controlled by this little Talon SRX motor controller. It comes out around through an amperage sensor and into the motor, which has a fan on the end of it. I had some cooling issues with this motor because it wasn't made for continuous use. It was fully enclosed and sealed. So what I did was I drilled some holes in it and added a fan on the back. I still have cooling issues, but I also have a motor with holes and a fan on the back. In a previous series of videos, this motor controller broke and I took it apart and diagnosed it and I kind of fixed it. And it's been basically working since then, so I guess I did fix it. On the right side, sort of hidden away, we have 
actually two things all covered in electrical tape. This is a 12 to 5 volt down stepper for the dash cam. And this is a voltage divider for my current sensing. Goes up into the Arduino, gets right in, and then displayed. Here's a fuse box on this side. Uh, I've only blown like four fuses doing stupid stuff. And on the back, bolted here, is a strong neodymium magnet. And sort of flapping around, flapping around in here, this is a Hall effect sensor that detects when the magnet goes by. So the Arduino calculates how many times per second the sensor sees the magnet, and it knows how fast it's going based on that. Here's a better look at the rear motor mount design. Courtesy of the replacement motor mount, which one day I might even install. And in case I made that look too easy for you, yeah, this is a pile not even of the prototyping rear sprocket designs. No, this is like ones that were actually on the bike and then failed. I probably made about twice as many of these. Here's the basic evolution of the rear sprocket design. These two actually were on the bike for a while, as well as this one. These other two, I think were kind of failures, or briefly were not really on the bike. You can see there is a lot of wear on this PLA printed part. Part of that was because the entire bike wasn't sorted at this point. This was one of the original uh, sprocket designs that I actually ran on the bike for about a month. But basically every time the, the chain broke or it got cut up and stuff, it would dig into various parts and eat them. And there's a line all around the rim where uh, various things were not aligned properly. So that got replaced by one of these, uh, which is essentially identical, but looks worse. And then I realized I didn't need all of those holes, and I uh, didn't need so much material. I had my first go at embossing the name of the project. Then I switched over to nylon, which is a lot stronger, but is a lot more flexible. And I don't think that really helped. I think it kind of unflexes in the wrong way, and then it fails to line up with the chain holes. You can see the, uh, the naming, the lettering is a lot easier to see, and it is titled Golden Hammer. And finally, the current iteration, I've lengthened the sprocket profile. I was hoping that this would actually get all the chain to line up properly, you know, like actually sit in the chain holes and not just right on top of them. Um, but that didn't work. This is working okay, though. The keen observers amongst you might have noticed already that only seven out of the eight current sprockets are made of nylon, the white material, and the last one is PLA in black. And the reason for that is because my nylon-enabled 3D printer broke before I could print the last nylon section. Here's a look at the chain and the sprocket intersecting. And this has basically been the bane of this entire project, is that the chain doesn't sit in the holes, and then down here it does, and then it sits for a little while, and it doesn't... Oh, actually, it's, uh, it's, it's about right right now. But yeah, it used to be that the chain would not actually line up with the sprocket teeth, and it would be like half a sprocket tooth off at the very end. So in order to fix that, I've actually... This is not the correct chain uh, tooth spacing. I had to add like two millimeters to the overall diameter or something, just to get all the chain loops lined up. And you can clearly see they didn't really actually get totally lined up, but it does get good enough. You might see in some of the footage I splice in that the bike is really loud. That's the chain kind of slipping across teeth in motion. It's a lot quieter now, uh, now that it's actually kind of basically working. So do I suggest that you do this yourself? Well, let's take a look at the name of the bike. No. This is the Unlikely Engineering Channel. You know, I do this for fun. If all I wanted was an electric bike, I'd just go and buy an electric bike. But this way, I get not just an electric bike, but also six months of entertainment. And I also get to look really cool in front of my managers and coworkers at work. Well, see you again next time.